to the nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez. And baby, tonight we're talking parenthood. Elevated version of parenthood because we're talking with champagne and caviar. But before I get into that, I'm not talking about the joys of parenting our children. It's the decision to become a parent because it ain't always as easy as laying down and getting it on. Sometimes you have to go through a lot of challenges <laughs> and we're gonna dive into those. But first, I need a cocktail in my hand and I've got Brandon here with CJ's masterpiece with a beautiful coupe. Here you go. What is this, darling? Champagne and St. Germain. Say it again. Champagne and St. Germain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is definitely gonna get us talking because parenthood ain't easy, baby. So we're gonna talk to them all about it. Let's get into it. Yeah. What's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. All right, let's dive into this conversation with my friends on the couch. You know this familiar face. We got Daryl Moore back in the building. We shared a lot last time, I and did, I right? know uh, you brought some friends over to do brought the same. Some good friends with me to share their story and their journey. I love it. Sitting yeah. next to you, we got. Kamisha McNeil, how you doing, I'm boo? I'm great, boo, how are you? I'm great, a little chilly, but we good, right? <laughs> we all right. Good. All right, sitting next to you, we got Montreal Burks Poulard and his husband next to him, Amistad Burks Poulard as well. Welcome, What's welcome. What's going on? Thank you for having us. All right, we're talking about parenthood and the decision to become parents. So how yes. has it been yeah. making that decision and diving into parenthood? Well, not parents just yet. We are, what do you mean? We're 68 days away. Yeah. So soon. Yes. Okay, but near the finish line. Yes. yes. Okay, so let's dive into the decision to become parents and then the journey of... Well, I'm an only child. Okay. And um, being an only child, I always wanted my own family. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, being the same gender and being married, you can't just sort of foster that. So thankfully, uh, my best friend, I guess, actually she's like a sister. We grew up three houses from each other. So. Mm -hmm. We have her egg, my sperm, and bam, thankfully we met Daryl and Caviar Dad, yeah. and he had an agency because it's extremely expensive, you know, to actually have a child through surrogacy, mm. even when you have your own egg and sperm. But uh, he had used the agency, he told me about it, they have a gorgeous son, nice and healthy, most important, and so I was like, okay, I'm good, I know him. He was never going to lead us wrong, so I'm just so glad, you know, that's sort of how we sort of started. So. Montreal, were you the same? Were you like, I definitely want to be a dad and I'm going to tackle that no matter what? Yes, I always wanted to be a father. So this is um, joyous, overwhelming at times, but very grateful. Okay, and the decision to have a surrogacy versus adoption and with somebody you know versus somebody you don't know, how is that decision making? Because... I feel like there's got to be so much conversation around this topic. Yeah, but to me, like, you know, being an only child and my parents were divorced. Mm. So I was very intentional about, okay, who would be the actual mother? Because at the end of the day, people are always going to want to know who's my mom, who's my father. And then also before we got married, you know, I'd already gone through a divorce. And my thought was, if I end up dying, where would the child be? Mm. So I think you have to be very intentional when you're talking about children because it's no longer about you and being mm. an only child when it's always been about yeah. me you, know, <laughs> you, you have to switch over that hat and that's the true definition of fatherhood you know already thinking about not thinking about yourself anymore you're thinking about your child that's not even here yet wow you know so that is you know you ready <laughs> I'm glad you think so. <laughs> well, you know, thank, thank you. Yeah, that's why you have a partner. That's why you have a partner. <laughs> Solo, yeah, dolo, maybe yeah. not so much. Not I don't know, y'all. So I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Kamisha, you sitting there looking all pretty. Thank all right. You. So, what about you? What is your journey with um, parenthood? Yeah, I am a mom of a three year old, oh. um, and I conceived my daughter through IVF. I have my own eggs, luckily, but I needed the sperm, mm -hmm. so I got a sperm donor. Um, what that process looks like is honestly looking through a catalog, um, picking someone that you feel called to, and that's what I did. I picked someone that I kept going back to their profile, back to their profile. They intrigued me. I liked what they stood for. Um, I liked their identity. They knew who they were, and, and you can hear their voice. You can see things that they've created. You can see different things about them, and plus their medical history. And we have, or I've met 13 other moms who took the same route, same sperm donor, and we are in community together and our kids know each other. 
Oh, okay, you just <laughs> Okay, so hold on. Let's clear some things up. Hold on, Kamisha. Okay. Uh, are you single? Are you in a same-sex relationship? What is your status? I am single, um, and I had a baby, you know, by myself, by choice. Oh. Um, my orientation is I am a lesbian. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like I was waiting on a, the perfect man to conceive with. So when I thought that I was ready, I was like, I'm not waiting on anybody. I'm going for it. And that's what I did. Wow. So did you always know you wanted to be a mother? Always. I was always a little girl with somebody's baby on my hip, somebody's baby in a stroller. I think I had the maternal instincts very early, and so I knew that I wanted to be a mom. Um, and I lost my mom when I was 22. Mm -hmm. And when I lost my mom, I knew that life was short. She was only 40 years old. Wow. And mm -hmm. so at that point, I said that when I'm ready, I'm not going to wait because I want to make sure I can experience as much life with my kid as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so the decision to use your own eggs versus adopting anything like that, what, how was that journey for you? Yeah, it was, it, I mean, for me, it was no choice. Once I went through all the testings and realized that I was healthy, um, I was financially ready. I decided to use my own eggs. I no need to go outside of that source. Um, the only thing I needed to find was a sperm. And she <laughs> found it. <laughs> and, and I did that. It. And yeah, so I went to IVF. I um, ended up having eight embryos at the end of the process. Wow. Put in one. That one happened to be my beautiful baby girl. Um, I have seven in the freezer if I ever decide to mother again or to be pregnant again. And so that's exciting. And I, I'm, look, I'm happy for the science and where science is now and to have that opportunity to experience motherhood. Wow. wow. Okay, but the, the whole community thing, I feel like that's <laughs> yeah. a whole other show. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> hold on. I'm going to have to take a little sip of this champagne in St. Germain. You stay right there because we'll be right back. Ooh, baby, what? Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been discussing non-traditional ways of becoming parents. We've got my friends Daryl, Kamisha, Montrio, and Armistead sharing the different ways that they've decided to become parents. You guys are almost there. But it all sounds like beautiful rainbows and butterflies, yeah. but uh, as you've shared with me before, it's yeah. not, it's, it ain't easy. It's it ain't not. a walk in the park. It ain't just deciding, oh, IVF, oh, I'm gonna join this agency. It is a, it is a struggle. Yeah. And that's what we're building. I'm with Caviar Dad, the foundation that I started, we're building a community where mm -hmm. whether you're a single mother or a same-sex couple or how, whatever that looks like for you, we're building a community so we can all come together and share these journey, the journey, the ups, the downs, the ugly. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm more vocal about the foundation and what I'm looking to create, I've gotten a lot of interesting messages on social media since that episode aired about us being undeserving of that. Um, but it doesn't matter, you know. We, we're gonna talk about it until we can't anymore because there are so many other positive messages that we receive. But the ugly, we still wanna address because we want them to know like, hey, we hear you, but we don't care, you know? <laughs> We laugh in yeah. your face yeah. while we sip champagne <laughs> and love on our children, <laughs> darling, okay? Uh, but Kamisha, how have you been received and how did you decide to take it on anyway? Yeah, that's a great question. It's exactly what Daryl said. So when you decide to be a single mom by choice, you get those questions like, who the hell would sign up for that? Why would you want to be a single mom? Why would you do that to your child? Um, and then when they found out that I'm also a lesbian, that you get those questions of like, well, who's the dad? What about the dad? Where's the dad? Um, when that's just not our, our case. This is our normal. This is what works for us. Luckily, I had beautiful support from my friends and family uh, when I wanted to go through this journey. Um, and my friends were there every step of the way. And so that is my village. And that is who I lean on when I need a break or when I'm a little tired or when we're going to cheer my baby on at her dance recital. And as Daryl said, I focus on the good and the positive. And although, you know, all financial responsibilities are on me, Motherhood has been the most beautiful yeah. life I could have ever asked for, and mm. I wouldn't have chosen it any other way. Yeah. Period. <laughs> Armistead and Montreal. I think one thing we're still struggling with right now is finding uh, a congregation mm. to raise our child. Mm. Uh, my grandfather was a Baptist minister, mm -hmm. and there are even individuals in my uh, immediate family that are, ooh, what are you doing? You're going to hell. I ain't got time for it. Right. At the end of the day, I've got to raise our child in an environment with him where we feel comfortable bringing her in there, uh, whether she brings her mom and her mom's wife, or it's just us. And she gets the foundational things which are great about Christianity. So the biggest question that I get a lot is, so are you gonna be called dad or are you gonna be called dad? And 
the biggest thing for me is the, to know that our daughter is going to be loved. Mm. And there's a no judgment zone. Mm -hmm. You know, in our home, we want to feel love and respected between the three of us. And as my husband said, um, finding the right balance Christianity wise is amazing. Finding the right village. I thank Daryl for, you know, bringing us here and present so we can be a unity. It takes a village yeah. Yeah. and we have that, you know, we have a village within this circle right here mm -hmm. and it's amazing. We got to talk more about this community and Caviar Dad and I know some of you may be interested and you might need the help so you stay tuned. We'll be right back with more of that info. We've got every episode of the Nightcap and we can go for hours. Download the Fox Local app on any of the following smart TV platforms and get in on the fun. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about different ways of becoming parents. We've got Daryl, Kamisha, Montreal, and Armistead. All right, I do have to ask a question because you've talked about non-traditional ways of becoming parents that sound like you need a budget for. Not a budget. <laughs> <laughs> not, not these chuckles, not these chuckles. You need some coins, you need some big pockets, right? Yes. Some saving for these. That's how you know you really want this family, yeah. right? Like this is a serious investment. Yeah. Hopefully your children like celebrate that. <laughs> and treat you as such. He will be reminded often <laughs> of this journey. But okay, I gotta ask, like how, how much we talk? You know, here? in the <laughs> price range for us, when I totaled everything together, we were at 80000 wow. $80,000. But, Cheaper. I was going to spend it somewhere else anyway. Yeah. You know, so, or. Why not? I mean, but it you're was, a beautiful there, baby boy. But I couldn't even put a price on, you can't put a price on that. You haven't had your baby girl yet, but no. how much has she cost you already? <laughs> All right. So, just so you know, she's going to cost you even more. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right, so, <laughs> so, I said, this is when the Rice NBA comes out of me. Daryl mentioned 80, but he didn't talk in <laughs> about how the 80 is comp uh, oh, composed. Yeah. The agency he used is the one I'm using and we're using together and the sets of is in Kenya. Mm. Yeah. That's substantially cheaper than $180,000 it could potentially cost to have one child in the U.S. Got yeah. you. So for, to give you a breakdown, uh, the first process of the egg retrieval and the creation of the embryo from my sperm and the egg, that was a good 24. Mm. Then you got to freeze them. Mm. And then you have five years, which is a time frame which those eggs, or rather those embryo are viable. Okay, so then now I've got some embryo, great, they're being stored in Nashville. Oh, I gotta send them to Kenya. Okay. That's $5,500. Okay, then you gotta have another <laughs> money about, okay, how much is it gonna cost for the agency in Kenya? So yeah, we're at 60 right now, and then, okay, you still gotta fly over there, but oh. it's gonna be substantially cheaper than the 180,000 <laughs> yeah. I would spend if I was here in the US. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so again, I'm so glad he created Caviar Dad, so people know that there are other options in the traditional, okay, I gotta spend $180,000, where am I gonna get this money? Okay, before I get more info on ca yeah. Caviar Dad, you went through IVF, Kamisha. I did. So how much was that? So I went through two processes before IVF, actually. Um, I did ICI, which is a process at home, and I did IUI, which is a process with a doctor. And both of those are kind of like throwing a, a banana in a barrel and just hoping it lands, <laughs> um, because you really don't know if it's gonna work. So uh -huh. I honestly wish I had switched straight to IVF. So total, I spent about 20000 but on just IVF alone. And I did use um, an American clinic. I did use an American clinic, and that was only about $10,000. And wow. their mission is to make IVF affordable. If people are wanting to know, to know who that is, hit up Caviar Dad. They can find out that information there. Okay, yeah. so Caviar yeah. Dad. Caviar Dad was inspired by our my son. Um, like I said, I'm in my fatherhood era, and I there was so much information during the time of me researching mm -hmm. that um, that I didn't know uh, what was uh, what was out there for me. It wasn't until I opened my mouth and put it in the universe publicly of what I was looking for, and it just came to me. And then going through the journey of, you know, international versus American, like all of those things, you know, communicating to your family, how to tell your family, how to educate your family, how to educate your friends, when to announce to your friends, when not to announce to your friends. Mm. Like it's, it's heavy. Yeah. So there's so much in preparing for a baby. But, you know, I wanted to do it, you know, in a bigger, you know, legacy thing of caviar dads where I'm going to my, my friends or people that I know that I'm helping them build their registries you know, prepare for the baby, 
because um, we don't know. Yeah. You just don't know like what a kid is going to need. But also I'm sharing the options that are there, like whether you choose adoption. Going through the state of Texas to adopt children, you know, there you're going to find babies that are, um, you know, young as, you know, newborns, but then also up until 17 years old when they're still in the system. Wow. So there's so many options for you to do. And is that more affordable than IVF or surrogacy? It is very more more affordable because you get you receive assistance to kind of help, you know, take it on. But then also there is private adoption, which is in, you know, Texas as well. And private adoption alone can also still start at forty thousand mm. dollars, you know. But under Caviar Dad, what we're doing is to raise money not only to educate potential parents or people that are, you know, looking to start their parents families. We're also going to help with those home visit fees that come with home adoption or through the state of Texas. It's fifteen hundred. You know, we're trying to help as many families with that to at least start the process and then possibly even a scholarship to help offset some of the costs, whether you choose IVF Just or, you know, it brought down maybe travel, cover travel to someone mm -hmm. that's choosing to go to Mexico or Kenya. Or if they decide to do it here and, you know, spend the 200000 at least that'll help, you know, with some offset some of the costs. So that's what we're doing. June 15th, we're hosting Day Before Father's Day. Um, that was intentional. Um, we are hosting a free seminar workshop um, at the Petroleum Club of Houston where we're talking about, we're giving so much information. We'll have the executive director of um, adoption, an adoption agency. We will have real life scenarios of women like Kamisha um, or families that are in the process, starting the process. I will share my journey more in depth about costs and the ugly, the good, the bad, and we're giving that information away for free. Wow. Instead of spending hours and hours online, you know, trying to research that information, you know, You're that information. So, but I just want to help as many families as I can. Well, cheers uh, yeah. to that, so, baby. Yes. And cheers to this chosen parenthood. Yes. You guys are embarking. Cheers. And cheers to Champagne and St. Germain, which, listen, <laughs> I'm heading behind the bar because I need CJ's masterpiece to hook me up. You stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. I'm behind the bar now because I've got CJ and Brandon here. They are part of CJ's Masterpiece. Brandon is the director of sales and catering. And of course, CJ is the owner and executive chef. And they are here to do what, darling? Back that glass, glass up. But you did hear me say executive chef. So that means we're also having some Midnight, Midnight Munchies. Munchies. Yeah. Another one. Okay, let's start with Daryl's favorite cocktail of all time, of which course. is Saint Germain and Champagne. Yes. What exactly yes. is that? So, Champagne is Champagne, <laughs> and the Saint Germain is actually a elderflower liqueur. Mm. So you can use any type of Champagne, Prosecco, Cava, um, a Brut. Okay, hold preferably. on. I'm gonna have to pause you because, according to Daryl, if you're gonna serve it to him, it better not be a Prosecco or anything like that. It better be Champagne. <laughs> Because he's stingy like that. He's looking at me sideways on, on the side, but that's fine. Continue, <laughs> darling. And then you don't necessarily need St. Germain. St. Germain is a brand preference, but you can get any type of elderflower liqueur. Okay, perfect. So how do we make it? Well, pretty simple. Two steps. Good thing about St. Germain, they have a cap that you can use to kind of measure it out. You just want to fill the cap there. No, 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 no. Pour it in. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not this being the easiest cocktail on this yeah. show ever, <laughs> CJ. What? And then you will top it with your champagne. Baby, that is the simplest cocktail. But it's so elevated and elegant, and I feel so mm, posh, yeah. darling. Cheers. Talk dirty to me. Thank you, Brandon. <laughs> All right, so CJ, what exactly is CJ's masterpiece? So, CJ Masterpiece is a full service catering company. Okay. From two people to 2,000 people. Whatever you need, we're there. Oh. From private dinners to bar service, banquets, weddings, bar mitzvahs, mm. graduation parties. Okay. Repasses. Okay. <laughs> we got you. You got everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but today, because we are talking about caviar dad, you decided you were going to bring yeah, caviar. caviar. Right. Today we have a black roll. Before before you dive into the black roll, for my, my, my audience that doesn't exactly know what caviar is, what exactly is caviar, darling? Caviar is actually fish eggs. I know it sounds... It sounds crazy. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> it sounds it's crazy. It's fish eggs, but again, it's a delicacy. Okay, so... What is this wonderful platter? So today we all are on TikTok. This TikTok culture is coming out with different caviars. Mm. So there's a kettle chip that um, our new age culture, our Gen Z, 
is doing mm -hmm. with caviar. A creme fraiche, black roll caviar, and a sprinkle of a little gold A little sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah, just a sprinkle. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> All right, look at these hungry people walking on up. Look, they want refills and they want chips. Come, oh my goodness. Mm, come on. Mmm. Mm. Baby. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm clutching my non pearls. <laughs> my caviar pearls. My caviar. <laughs> okay, so CJ, if they want to reach out to y'all and book y'all for an event or for a private dinner that they're going to be having, how do they reach out? www.cjsmasterpiece.com or on Instagram at cjs underscore masterpiece. I love it. All right, well, cheers to all the parents or want to be parents or try to be parents. You got this, baby. Caviar Dad is there for you. You got a village, yeah, right? You got a village. All righty, cheers to you. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers. cheers. Ooh, more caviar, darling. Okay, how do I do this? How exactly?